As a restaurant goer, you probably don't check the online reviews very often for your favorite restaurants in your own hometown, the ones you've been going to for years. But I know most of us will pull out that phone and start searching when it's time to decide where to eat on vacation, where the stakes for having a good experience feel higher than usual, and we know we have a limited amount of time to taste the best our new place has to offer. What happens when 97% of a restaurant's customers are vacationers? Because the restaurant sits on an island destination with very few locals and tens of thousands of visitors per year, and negative reviews are creeping up to dominate its online presence. That's the situation Jekyll Island's classic beachfront Tortuga Jacks has started to find itself in the last few years, but we're here to help right the ship and keep the seas of prosperity laughing at Tortuga Jacks' door. Nacho Consulting Group is perfectly situated to provide the guidance that the only Mexican restaurant and Georgia's most famous Golden Isle needs. Our company has been working with Mexican restaurants, specifically the Mexican restaurants in Georgia and the surrounding states, for over 20 years, so we're familiar with your primary clientele's expectation for their vacation dining experiences. Nacho Consulting Group was founded by a restaurant heiress named Myra Martinez, who grew up in her family's Mexican restaurants. She gained a reputation early as their secret ingredient for her almost uncanny ability to identify customers' preferences and create dining experiences that consistently exceeded their expectations of just another Mexican restaurant. After years of building her own knowledge and experience, Myra set out to create a team of like-minded individuals also passionate about helping Mexican restaurants create their own unique brands. All of our consultants are trained by Myra's original team. And together, we've been featured in magazines including Southern Living and shows including Chopped and Hell's Kitchen. We've even served as consultants on Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. But our hearts remain at home, in Georgia, where we make it our personal mission to cultivate America's best and most unique Mexican restaurants. Tortuga Jack's iconic and inimitable beachfront location and its status as the sole Mexican restaurant on the island provide the kind of foundation we are always excited to help build on. And we'll make sure that in the land of crab shacks and shrimp shanties, Tortuga Jacks shines on its own Baja Mexican merits. As a senior consultant with Nacho Average, and actually a member of Myra's original team, I was assigned to work with Tortuga Jacks because I've also had previous successes with other Mexican restaurants and specialty and tourist locations. Most recently, I've helped to open an unusual but wildly successful German-Mexican fusion restaurant and bar in Bavarian Helen, Georgia. I enjoy the challenge of helping create a restaurant atmosphere that is, if not 100% authentically Mexican, always authentically itself, giving customers the taste they love, combined with the vibes of whatever vacation they chose, for an experience they won't have at any other restaurant. Right now, there are already parts of Tortuga Jacks that bridge that gap that's so important between a solid burrito lunch and a magical vacation getaway, but other parts could use my help. I'll get into details and recommendations shortly, but first, let's zoom out and consider the subject restaurant as a whole. Tortuga Jacks has been in business since 2015 and is located right at the southern end of the most visited day beach on the island and right across from a large complex of putt-putt, bike rentals, and playgrounds, so it's highly visible and an easy stop between beach activities. It features a menu of simple Mexican dishes for an American palate, including items like gringo queso dip, nachos, fajitas, big boy burritas, and bangin' shrimp tacos, along with a full bar and a long list of specialty margaritas. The restaurant also serves breakfast, which is unusual for restaurants on the island, and it provides one of the only social places on the island for vacation goers to start their day drinking early with bottomless breakfast mimosas. As the only Mexican restaurant on the island, its primary competitors aren't other Mexican restaurants. The length of the drive off the island and the cost of re-entry keeps most vacationers from venturing too far out. Its biggest competitors are the island's other restaurants with similar visibility to tourists, casual atmospheres, and low price points. Two main competitors are the American homestyle Driftwood Bistro and the Irish Wee Pub. Redbug Motors Pizza, though not a full restaurant, is also a strong competitor because it's right next door to Tortuga Jacks, making it another common choice for hungry bikers and golfers turning in their equipment right there in the center of the island, especially when Tortuga Jacks looks busy like it might have a wait. For those who end up choosing Tortuga Jacks for the competition, the most common reason is location, and on that front, they never walk away disappointed. 
Tortuga Jack's greatest strength and most common attribute mentioned in its customers' positive reviews is its position right above the beach, overlooking the Atlantic Ocean from its tiki porch. No other restaurant on the island has an ocean-facing outdoor eating this close to the water, and people love it. This positive review is just one of many. Note how the reviewer bookends all his thoughts with comments about the beach. The views of the beach were wonderful. We enjoyed the view of the beach. Even comments that have nothing else to say about the restaurant that's nice, one-star comments still grudgingly acknowledge the beauty of the location. It's a competitive advantage that cannot be overstated. Tortuga Jacks also does a great job of enhancing their beach party atmosphere with frequent live music, which many reviewers comment positively on. In addition to local musicians who capture the laid-back, beachy vibes that vacationers are looking for, Tortuga Jacks occasionally hires more noteworthy, quasi-celebrity performers, including past competitors from The Voice. Here's another customer who derives from what she liked so much about her visit by repeating it multiple times. Super fun with live music. We really enjoy the live music outside, she says. In addition to the way it adds, as she says, to the noisy tiki bar type atmosphere, other customers appreciate the extra built-in value of a concert with their dinner, which turns their vacation meal into more of an event without costing them any more than the food itself. That previous review also mentioned creative cocktails, and with very few exceptions, most customers also consider those a great strength of the restaurant. Tortuga Jack's has an extensive margarita menu with a wide variety of flavors, and sizes from skinny to fishbowl, in addition to two full bars that can make all standard cocktails on request, and many customers speak highly of those bartender skills. I mentioned before that Tortuga Jack's is unique and that it's one of the only places on the island that serves alcohol early, before 11 a.m., along with its brunch menu. Some customers complained that mimosas and Bloody Marys were the only pre-noon drinking options, but most see the availability of alcohol at all that early in the morning, on a beach, and even bottomless, as much as they want to drink for one price, as a huge boom. Here's a pretty funny review that captures the spirit of most customers' thoughts on the subject. Bottomless. Mimosas. Yes. Here's one last strength that impacts the relatively small portion of customers that has an outsized impact on Tortuga Jack's online reviews, and therefore the ratings that help all customers decide to visit. Customers with dogs love that the patio is dog-friendly, that servers will bring their canine companions bowls of water when they arrive, and that there's even a mini dog menu of unseasoned chicken bowls priced by dog size. This is a good example of the way Tortuga Jack's patio dining caters toward vacationers not only by providing the laid-back holiday atmosphere they're looking for, but also by attending to their specific needs. Dog owners are more likely to want to take their dogs dining with them when they're on vacation, more than when they're at home, because the alternative is leaving them in an unfamiliar hotel or rental house. Many of Tortuga Jack's competitors also offer the same kind of dog-friendly patio option, but it doesn't make these dog owners writing reviews any less grateful than Tortuga Jack's does. Now you may have noticed something strange about the positive reviews I've showed you so far, and that's that all of these interactions between Tortuga Jacks and its customers that leave the customers walking away happy seem to happen on the outside Tiki Porch, even though the restaurant has a huge indoor area several times the size of its patio that seats every day several times the number of diners. What are those indoor customers saying? Well, they're not saying a lot that's positive. This is one of Tortuga Jack's main weaknesses at this point. Without the beach views, the live outdoor music, and the party atmosphere on the Tiki Porch, customers find Tortuga Jack's to be nothing special. It's a Mexican restaurant with standard, mediocre fare at best, according to many customers, and not all customers are so generous at that. Beyond the outdoor atmosphere, a lot of customers see the food itself as a huge disappointment, many so much so that they vow never to return and do their best to dissuade others from visiting either. The biggest issue they cite isn't even authenticity, a common complaint of Mexican-style restaurants, but actual basic quality. Customers report stringy, dry meat, watery queso, dry beans, lack of seasoning, and food that consistently comes out cold. And they make pretty negative assumptions about what this means. Whether it's true or not, many reviewers accuse the restaurant of using pre-made dishes or even pre-packaged foods rather than cooking to order. There are plenty of reviews, interestingly, that cite the restaurant's quick service time, not as a positive, but as a sign that everything's just waiting in there under dim heat lamps and congealing. Of those who are more forgiving about the quality, many still say they go away hungry. Their complaints are not about quality, but quantity. 
Customers seemed surprised at the portion prices, expecting that a place with fishbowl bar margaritas and expansive views would serve equally generous portions of food. Many customers cite specific menu items, including XL burritos that look more like their idea of mediums, miniature tacos, and nachos that under a thin layer of meat and cheese turn out to be all chips. Overall, customers don't complain about the prices of Tortuga Jacks, recognizing that for a vacation destination, their prices are pretty reasonable. But that perception changes quickly when the customers don't get their fill. Check this review for an example. Just like I cited one strength earlier that doesn't affect all customers, but that has an outsized effect on the reviews that determine the restaurant's online ratings, there is one weakness of Tortuga Jacks that is consistently tanking ratings, even though most of the customers don't experience this. That is the ratings from customers who decided to pick up food they ordered ahead of time on the app. Tortuga Jacks offers pickup ordering through the Toast Takeout app. The app itself has good reviews, but not a single positive review appears on Tortuga Jacks review sites from customers who used to pick up food from there. There are many one-star reviews like this one, and they're not just brief complaints that the process is slow or ineffective, but there are long, incredibly detailed stories of their disappointment. This one's unique in that it even acknowledges that the customer thought the food was pretty good when she got it, but you'll notice that good food doesn't make up for her bad experience and didn't add any stars. Recognizing the strengths and weaknesses that customers are reporting in these online reviews is especially important for Tortuga Jacks as most of its customers are vacationers, newcomers to the island, who want a dining experience worthy of their vacation, and are going to rely on ratings to determine which restaurants are going to give it to them. Right now, Tortuga Jacks is number 12 on TripAdvisor's Best Restaurants of Jekyll Island list, which is pretty bad, because the island only has about a dozen restaurants. This list is based off Yelp ratings, and the reason for Tortuga Jacks' position on the list is clear. It has a half a star to a full star rating lower than almost every other restaurant on the island. It's time for me to provide some suggestions to help Tortuga Jacks change that. First, it's important to note that Tortuga Jacks does have those strengths that you've heard, and it's important to express those strengths to the customers and guide them to take advantage of them. Tortuga Jacks already does a good job of this by advertising its tiki porch, having customers enter the restaurant through the porch, and using clever signs and t-shirts that help communicate the fun atmosphere. For example, in dog beers, I've only had one, or shut up and drink your margarita. It's important for Tortuga Jacks to pay attention to its smaller strengths as well, the ones that it's not fully communicating to its clientele yet. Of all the terrible reviews of quesadillas and burritos, there are some positive food reviews, and they're usually from people who ordered seafood. The fish tacos, shrimp fajitas, and other seafood-faced Baja meals at the restaurant go over with the customers much better than the more traditional American-Mexican restaurant fare. Tortuga Jacks can highlight this with menu changes that center on their seafood options, separating out those items and literally making them the middle of the menu, reminding customers that they're not here on an island for boring regular Mexican food they can get at home, but for a beach experience, and that means fresh caught fish in their tacos. This will help guide customers toward the restaurant's existing culinary strengths. Rethinking the menu layout will also give Tortuga Jacks the opportunity to trim it down and cut out items that aren't working. Remember all those reviews about terrible Mexican food? I would suggest simply getting rid of some of the more standard Mexican restaurant menu items so that you can focus on the seafood-based dishes. Get rid of the items that lead reviewers to say, I could have gotten this anywhere, in order to focus on dishes that feel special, fun, beach-worthy. Customers already express how much they love the weird, fun, tropical cocktails, with everything in them from fried plantains to jalapenos and hot sauce. Tortuga Jacks could extend that lesson to its menu and benefit from adding ingredients, sides, and even just garnishes that make that same old burrito feel new, tropical, and fun. Just as Tortuga Jacks has the opportunity to infuse its fun tiki porch atmosphere into the food it serves, it should also make an effort to bring that tiki porch atmosphere inside the restaurant itself. Right now, the only thing to remind customers that they're on the Golden Isles, on vacation inside the restaurant, is a 3D sea turtle with a sombrero bursting through one wall. Otherwise, the interior looks much like any standard Mexican restaurant. Lots of orange, red, and green, lots of color blocking, and lots of sombreros. Redecorating the interior of the restaurant with more of a fusion approach and rethinking its colors and art 
to lean more toward the blues and whites of the ocean, maybe the natural wooden fiber colors of tiki hat outside, that would help the restaurant's atmospheric continuity. So the customers inside remember that they're at the beach, that this Mexican restaurant is particular, unique, and special. It's already evident that as much as negative reviews can provide opportunities for real positive improvements to be made to your business, they also represent the biggest threat to your business's continued success. When you know that most of your clientele are going to be using internet reviews to decide whether to come eat with you, it can be tempting to jump in there yourself and defend your business against those negative reviewers. Defensive, however, is not usually a good look. Right now, the responses that your social media managers are leaving on review sites are probably doing more damage than good. This one's an example. First of all, this employee didn't choose a review with anything substantive to respond to. There are plenty of other low ratings with real concerns to be addressed. Second, addressing the concerns, this employee did it really nominally. They said, I assure you we'll discuss as a team your recent visit. It sounds blatantly false that the whole team would get together to talk about this one line bubble guts comment, and if they did, what would they talk about? It doesn't give any details to discuss. Finally, the rest of the comment, while couched in pleasant language, thank you for coming, Merry Christmas, doesn't say much more of substance than the review itself. It doesn't show other customers who may read it anything but the restaurant's defensive posture and its false sounding claims that you actually care. This is the written response equivalent of a server holding up her hands at a complaining customer and saying, hey, the food here is great. We really care about our customers, so I don't know what your problem is. Responses to online reviews can be much more helpful when they address real concerns and help clear up misconceptions. For example, while I focused on negative reviews about the food, there are plenty of reviews complaining about the lack of light in the parking lot. A response to those kind of views, explaining that you don't use white overhead lights because they can confuse baby sea turtles on the nearby shore into walking in the wrong direction, thinking your lights are the moon that usually guides them, that would help clear up a misconception that you don't care about your customers, and it would help reviewers see you as doing something good rather than defending something you've done that's bad. Unfortunately, better responses to online reviews cannot fix all the threats you're facing, and they certainly can't fix the largest one right now. The customers view ubiquitous disappointment with the food that you're serving. There are many, many restaurants that end with the line, don't come hungry, suggesting that other patients visit for the live music, the cocktails, and the view, but eat dinner somewhere else. There are other reviewers who corroborate this, saying they did just that. They listened to the reviews and had a couple margaritas and free chips and called it a night. While Tortuga Jack's two bars are a significant part of your business, the restaurant is not designed to exist primarily as a bar and the restaurant needs to head off this grassroots rebranding of its business. It will take some time and effort, but as this reviewer says, the food problem is a fixable issue. It may not be the best idea to fire all your staff and buy frozen food from Walmart, as he suggests, but we've already covered some solid suggestions for menu changes that can start to reshape customers' perceptions of your restaurant as a full-service location, not just a bar, while you work on improving the food items that aren't working. We focused a lot on the threat of losing your primary customer base, those vacation goers who make up 97% of your daily attendance. But you also face the threat of another loss that's only going to exacerbate this main one. The locals are losing faith in Tortuga Jacks. If they only represent 3% of your income, why should you care? Well, they're the local business owners, the tour guides, and the folks on the street who answer the question, any good places to eat around here? For those vacation goers who are feeling too free and relaxed to pull out their phones. Those who identify themselves in their reviews as locals or part-time residents with more investment in Chuckle Island than your typical vacation goer usually don't sound any happier than those vacation goers about their dining experiences, and many say they've already written the place off. This means that when you do make the changes that are going to save Tortuga Jacks, you need to let those locals know, create events to draw them back in, and rekindle their sense of buy-in as part of the community. As Roy here suggests, he's not totally lost, not yet. He just wants somebody to save this place. The biggest threats to Tortuga Jacks that we've already discussed are ones that are going to take real time and effort to face. So I want to end with a large threat that's going to be easier to take down. The majority of those one-star reviews that cite the most actionable problems are those about your online ordering and curbside pickup service that I mentioned before. Let's be honest, your customers do not like that. If these reviews stopped being posted, the difference to your ratings percentage would be quickly noticeable. Conversely, if they keep being posted, they're going to end up having that outsized effect on your rating percentage. 
in comparison to the percentage of your customers that actually use the service. To fix the problem, you may need to switch online ordering apps. You may need to schedule workers to work primarily on those orders. Or you may perform a cost-benefit analysis and decide to just shut the program down and let what's working better keep working. To help you and your employees remain focused on the topics I've discussed here today, I've made for you this SWOT analysis chart as a reference. Remember that your restaurant's strengths and weaknesses aren't just static things you're good at or you're not, but they represent real opportunities for improvement and real threats you face in the future if you choose not to take your customers' opinions into consideration. In conclusion, on behalf of Nacho Consulting Group, I want to encourage you to take action. As a vacation destination, your online reviews are your primary method of advertising your businesses and its strengths, and there's something that you should pay systematic attention to. You should be reading these reviews twice a week so that you're able to provide responses to substantive concerns in a timely manner. Remember that your responses aren't just to placate unhappy former customers, but to show future customers that you run the kind of responsible, attentive business that they can trust their special vacation time too. And most of all, remember that the actual changes you make inside the restaurant itself are what are really going to help your ratings most. I've enjoyed working with all of you at Tortuga Jacks and coming up with recommendations to help move your restaurant up those TripAdvisor recommendation lists. I and the rest of Nacho Consulting Group will continue to be available to offer you guidance as you begin to implement my suggestions. You're welcome to email us at info at nachoconsulting.com, call the team at 770-322-4567, or call my direct number at 770-322-4523. You can also always find us at our home on the web at nachosconsulting.com. As a final thank you, I have a gift for every member of your team our special, collectible, not-too-average consultants margarita glasses. These are just for you. After all your customers are gone for the night and you've emptied their glasses, washed them, and put them back on the shelf, we hope you'll use these to pour your own margaritas and raise them up to toast your future success. Thank you sincerely for your time today, and now I will let you get back to business.